Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Before we go any further with morning inspiration, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day, another opportunity. Thank you for this platform. Father God, please forgive me of all my sins and give me what to say to these, your precious people. In the name of your Son, Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. So we've been taking a journey through Psalms. We're going to continue with that. And today, I'll be looking at a, a psalm that was written by David. It will be the 34th psalm. And let's read it, and then we'll, we'll dive back into it. But let's read it. We're going to read Psalms, the 30, 34th chapter. Let's go 1 through 15, okay? And it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is it, what man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. Okay, that was quite a bit that we read. So let's just take our time and walk through it like we always do. So we see right here in the very first verse, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. In other words, I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to make a choice to praise God when it's good, when things are going great. Oh, I'm going to praise him. When things are not going great, I'm going to praise him. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Okay. It says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise is right on my lips. I got to bless him at all times. The good and bad, I want to be consistent. It doesn't matter my situation. It doesn't matter what my environment looks like. It doesn't matter how I feel in my body. It doesn't matter, you know, what things I'm dealing with. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. I'm making a choice. See, this is a choice that we make. When we accept Christ, when we get saved, when we start our relationship with Christ, we make a choice. We've heard the word. We choose choice to believe. Okay? So it's all about a choice. And this is about a relationship. I'm not here to talk about religion. I'm here to talk about a relationship. Okay? We are told, and I always go to this. You guys know that when you tune in. I always refer to John 3.16. Why do I refer to that? Because this is the, the purest message. The gospel is not racist. The gospel is not segregated. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, doesn't matter what your skin tone is, doesn't matter where, what country you, li you, you live in or what country you're from, whosoever, rich, poor, okay? black, white, whatever, good credit, bad credit, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Salvation is to all of us. If you are from earth, if you're here, if you're an earthling, salvation is for you, okay? It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When they're talking the world, they're talking the earth, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, anybody, believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Okay? Let's keep going. 
It says, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Okay? My soul is going to brag on God. My soul is going to talk about how good he is. Okay? My soul is going to just get excited. You know when, when you're really excited about something and you're like, oh, well, you know what I had. Let's let's use some natural things first because we have to go natural sometimes and then we can get spiritual. Oh, you know I had this meal. Oh, this meal was good. It was it was something. I mean, they put their, sometimes we use the same, they put their foot in it. Okay? And you're just bragging on that meal. Okay? We brag on that meal, but you know what? That's natural. Can't we brag on an awesome God, the awesome God that we serve? We woke up this morning. I woke up. My house was like I left it. I woke up. I had the activity of my limbs. I woke up. I had a right mind. I woke up with a good portion of health. God didn't have to do any of that, but he did. And I thank him for it. I thank him as I'm starting to wake up. I'm like, Lord, I thank you. Okay, when when your soul is making bo her boast in the Lord, her your soul is excited, and it wants other souls to be excited. It wants other souls to catch on fire. It wants other souls to catch catch what you're doing and really praise the Lord. That's what this is about. Let's go a little further, because we know this was written by David, and he was a praiser. That's one of the things David was. Yeah, he had a problem with the ladies, but he was a praiser. Okay, that was at his core. He was a praiser and he loved to praise the Lord. He wanted to praise God with everything he had. He was a musician. Okay, he, he was skilled at, at, you know, at writing songs and music. He was also a warrior. David was many things, but number one, he was a praiser. Okay, let's go a little further. And it says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. In other words, partner up with me. Come on, let's let's make a multitude. Let's get the congregation together. Let's magnify the Lord. Let's do it together. I've done it on my own, but it's so much better when we're together, when we're like a flock, okay? Because, you know, David talked about the Lord is my shepherd. So when he's saying, magnify the Lord with me, come on, get together in a congregation, get together in a multitude, let's get together and be on the same accord, let's really praise God, let's go for broke, let's give God all the praise he deserves, let's not hold anything back till tomorrow, we don't know if tomorrow's going to come, but we can praise him right now, we can praise him in this very moment, okay, and we go a little further, it says, they looked unto him, okay, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me, from all my fears. Okay, when David is talking about, I've sought the Lord. Now, David was being chased by King Saul. He, he had enemies on the left, enemies on the right. And he said he had all he had to seek with God. And when he sought God, he said he heard me. In other words, when I'm going through all this, God took time to hear me. And he didn't just hear me. He delivered me from all my fears. He put me at ease. Even though my life is still in danger, he's put me at ease. So guess what? I'm not stressed out, so I'm not going to die from the stress of my life being threatened because God has put me at ease. He's letting me know he has me. He has, as they say, he has my back. Okay? And when God has your back, he doesn't take a day off. He doesn't get sleepy. He doesn't forget that he's supposed to have your back. He has your back. Okay? That's what's so great about this. So... We see that we're magnifying the Lord together as a congregation, as a group. God is too good to keep to myself. I want to jump back a little bit. God is too good to keep to myself. You just don't know how good God has been to me. You don't know. He, he's, he's been a healer. He's been a way maker. He's been a job provider. Okay? He's been a, a substance provider. He's provided food. He's provided a job. He's provided so many things for me. Okay? And you don't know like I know what he's done for me. Oh, that's a song. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. You know, you won't tell it. Let me tell it what he's done for me. Okay? So, let's go a little further. And it says, let's jump down a little. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Now let's look at the word fear. Fear is not you're afraid. Fear is a, a word for reverence. Fear is a word for respect. 
the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Once again, I told you, he's a deliverer, okay? He's a keeper. He's a deliverer. He's a way maker, okay? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him, okay? And when it says, taste and see, that doesn't mean check out God's credentials. Instead, it's a warm invitation. Try this. I know you'll like it. You've seen that before. When somebody has something that's good to eat, or they went to a place that where they, they, they've been treated very well when they went on vacation or whatever, and they say, oh, you have to go to Sandals. Now, I'll use Sandals because that's a, a, a resort that I've seen commercials for. I've never been, but they say, oh, you got to go to Sandals. And they have the nice, serene music, and it, and it looks like they're having like a great time. And all you got to say, this is what David is doing. Oh, taste and see. Come on, you got to taste this. You got to taste God. He's good. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste. So you're tasting and your eyes are open. Okay? You're tasting and your eyes are open. And you're seeing and you're tasting at the same time. Two senses are working together that God is good. Okay? You taste, you see, and you know that God is good. That's what the author is saying right here. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man that trusts in him. In other words... When you trust in God, you are blessed. Okay? You're blessed. It may not look like you're blessed sometimes, but you are blessed. Because I thought about it one time. I said, well, you know, I, 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 I've been paying my tithes. And, and he said he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing I can't receive. And I was looking at just monetary. And see, sometimes we get too caught up in money. Okay? And then I thought about it. I said, you know, he open you up a window and pour you out a blessing you're unable to receive. So I got to go to my phone and share one of these blessings that God did for me. And I'm going to go and I'm going to tell you because the thing is, I have to look at it on the phone because I don't remember the exact number. And then if I tell you a number and it's wrong, then I, I won't be telling the truth. So I want to look at the exact number. And what I'm looking for right now is I'm looking at my blood pressure. Yes, I'm still on blood pressure medicine. But I want to share with you on November 25th, 2012, I had just preached a sermon in church. My blood pressure was 154 over 110. That's very high. Okay. The following day, okay, this was uh, November 25th, 2012. At 1 p.m., it was 154 over 110. And on November 26th, 2012, at 11.15 a.m., it was 214 over 136. I'm going to say that once again. It was 214 over 136. Okay? That's supposed to be stroke. You're supposed to stroke. Okay? But you know what? I was able to drive when I took it. And I wasn't tempting God. God kept me because I didn't have sense to keep myself. Okay? They said, you know, when you pay your tithe, it says he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you aren't able to receive. I mean, he blessed me. He kept my body. Okay? We're talking about 214 over one. Look, let, let me say that one more time. I want to talk about how high that pressure was. 214 over 136. You should stroke out on that. God bless you. And good morning, Evangelist Thomas. You should stroke out on that. Okay, so when the author here is talking about, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth, I got to partner with David on this, King David, and say, I got to bless the Lord at all times, because he's been so good to me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Okay, then it says, oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. It says, oh, oh. Fear the Lord. Oh, reverence the Lord. Okay? That's what it's talking about. And right here, it says, you believe you belong to the Lord, but do you fear? That is reverencing him. To fear the Lord means to show deep respect and honor him. We demonstrate true reverence by our humble attitude and genuine worship. Reverence was shown by Abraham and the Israelites. Their reaction to God's 
presence varied, but all deeply respected him. Let me park on that for a moment. When we reverence God, when we respect God, we can each reverence him and respect him in our own unique way, but we're yet respecting him. Okay, I can't just talk to God any type of way. When I go to him, I should be very humble. Because guess what? You're talking to the creator of the universe. Okay? You're talking to, you know, the great I am. Okay? You're talking to the only true and living God. The one that breathed into us, that kissed us. And the, the very life essence that's in us is from him. So you can't just go there and say, hey God, no, 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 no. Okay? We have sense enough naturally. If we go see the President of the United States, we call him Mr. President. Whether we voted for him, whether we agree with him or not, that's the, the proper etiquette that you're supposed to talk to the President. You don't just say, hey, Donald, or hey, hey, um, Barack, hey, uh, uh, George. No, you say Mr. President. So if we can do that for an imperfect man, because all the three that I named were imperfect, just like we're imperfect. I'm not knocking them. I'm just stating a fact. They're, they have imperfections, just like I do. If we can do that for an imperfect being, shouldn't we step up our game? Shouldn't we, you know, come before God correctly? Shouldn't we say, oh, Lord, I just thank you. It says we can boldly approach the throne of grace. That means we shouldn't have any fear. We should be able to come to him. And we should be able to let our hair down. But it's a way that we have to approach God. It's a way that we have to talk to him. Okay? It says fear. Okay, reverence. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Okay, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Okay? It says they that seek the Lord. So if you're seeking God and you're really pressing after him, God shows up. Okay? I have not put a title on this, but you know what? Let's just say for this, bless the Lord at all times. Let's just use that. Bless the Lord at all times. Okay, we got to be consistent. We got to be instant in season. That's what the Apostle Paul was telling Timothy. He says you got to be instant in season and out of season. In other words, you got to be consistent when it's your season. What does that mean? Things are going great for you. It's my season. It's my season. I'm winning. Things are going great and I feel good. All of a sudden, it's out of season. Things aren't working for me. No matter what I try, I'm not having success. But guess what? You still got to bless the Lord. You got to bless the Lord when you're up. You bless him when you're down. Bless him up when you're down. Be consistent, okay? That's what we have to do. We have to bless the Lord at all, all times. See, that's where David is revealing the secret of success right here in this, this thing called life. You know what? I'm going to have some problems. I'm going to be misunderstood. Sometimes I'm going to miss the mark. But guess what? I can bless the Lord at all times. I can praise his name at all times. I can get excited about communicating with God. I can do that. We have to bless the Lord at all times. See, I appreciate that. Thank you, Evangelist Thomas. We have to bless the Lord at all times. Bless him. We're praising his name. We're worshiping him at all times. Okay, and that's with all that we are. So guess what? Even though we're all worshiping God at the same time, our worship is unique. And so it's like a symphony. When you have a violin, we can both be playing the violin, but guess what? Your violin might be just a little higher than mine. Mine might be a little lower than yours. And when it all comes together, it sounds beautiful. I mean, that's natural. Now we're looking spiritual. Praise is just like that. We're giving a concert performance for God. That's the, 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 the easiest example that I can give of praise. That's the easy example I can give of worship. When we come together as a body of believers in our respective churches, we are praising the Lord. We're giving God an orchestra. We're giving him the fruit of our lips. We're giving him, you know, the sound of our hands. We're raising our hands. We're shouting. 
we're, we're, we're just saying, Lord, I love you. If, if you can't do no more, sometimes we speak in tongues. If, if you can't do anything more than just say, mm, 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 mm. That you're, you're groaning and you're moaning. You're just letting God know, Lord, this moment, I don't want to let go. I want to press in. I want to hold you. I want to grab on to you. I mean, and when I think about that, I like to use the analogy of children, and I think that's the reason I had so many so that it's constantly before me. And you see, when you look at the child, when they grab onto their mother, there's something about when they grab the mother, they just cling to her. Okay? They'll grab the daddy too, but they cling to that mama. They're like, ugh. And it's like they feel comfort right there. And we got to get to the point of our praise where we get into that place with God where we don't want to let God go. We have to be just like Jacob when he was wrestling with the angel, when he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless my soul. Not till you give me some money. Not till you make me famous. I'm wrestling with you, and I'm not letting you go. I didn't got a hold of you, and guess what? I'm not letting you go. I've pressed in, and I don't want to let go. Once you do that, that's when breakthroughs happen. Okay? The song says when the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. We got to praise our way through. Praise shifts the atmosphere. Sometimes we need some atmosphere shifts. Okay? Sometimes, and when we praise and the praise gets so good, it doesn't just shift the atmosphere for me. It doesn't just shift the atmosphere for you. The atmosphere is big. So guess what? When, when Evangelist Thomas is praising God and it gets so good and she's pressed in, Guess what? That's causing a shift over there where I'm at. When I'm praising the Lord, it gets so good to me. It causes a shift where she's at. When we as a body of Christ praise the Lord the way we can praise him, when we press in and give God everything we can, it causes atmospheric shifts. We need some atmospheric shifts. Okay? We need to praise the Lord. We need to press in. Let's keep going. And it says, Come, ye children. Hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. In other words, hey, I know you're younger. Come here. You're younger. You don't have, you don't really, you haven't experienced this. You haven't lived life yet. I want you to understand how to respect and reverence God before you get too old, before you don't know the way. I'm trying to show you something while you're younger. I've gotten a little experience. And David says, I once, I love that, that's where he said that scripture. I once was young. So I was, I was a young man once. I'm getting older, so I can't say what David just said, but I can say this. Uh, at first, I'll quote David, and then I'll have to use my own quote. It says, I once was young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen with these eyes, I've never seen with these eyes, the righteous forsaken or his seed begging, begging bread. So David is saying, I was young, but now I'm old, but there's one thing that I've seen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. God doesn't forsake the righteous. And guess what? By them being righteous, guess what? Their seed ain't going to have to beg no bread. They ain't sitting out there shaking a little can and want you to put a nickel in or a dime in or dollars in or whatever. So David says, I once was young, but now I'm old. I can say I once was young, but now I'm older. And guess what? I haven't seen that either. I've seen a lot. I've seen some things that would make you shake your head. But I haven't seen the righteous forsaken. I haven't seen somebody who's living all they know how and loving God all they know how and trying to love people all they know how. I haven't seen them forsaken. We might think they're forsaken, but guess what? I haven't seen them forsaken. God still cares about them. Okay? When your body gets older and you can't move like you used to move, God yet cares about you. I think he even cares a little more because he says, if you've done this to the least of them, you've done it to me. Jesus lets you know that if you've done this to somebody who's in a, a, a lower state, I'm looking at them even more because it says, I, the Bible tells us that he is the good shepherd. So the good shepherd is looking after the sheep that have gotten a little weak. Okay, now if you're a healthy and strong sheep, guess what? You're in the, in the flock. I'm not as worried about you as I am about the one that came up a little lame, the one that's a little sick, the one that is having some problems, you know, remembering, the one that, that's having some problems in their body, okay? That's what it comes down to. We have, we have an awesome God, okay? Let's keep going. 
and it says, What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? So it's talking about what type of man are you? That if you desire life and love many days, that he may see good. This is this is the what you need to do. Okay? And this is what I'm closing with. You keep your mouth, your tongue. We don't need to talk as much as we talk. Okay? From evil. So we need to keep our mouth. We need to stop talking all this evil. Um, and I lift from speaking God. We don't need to speak any and everything. Depart from evil. In other words, if evil is this way, we need to go that way. Okay? We don't run into we don't run to evil. Okay? And do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Okay? The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. That was Psalms 34, chapter 1 through verse 15. We did a little reading this morning. That's what we have to do sometimes. We need to stir up that pure mind. That's what we have to do. Okay? Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for your precious word. Lord, let us have an attitude of gratitude. Let us bless you at all times, Father. Let us be instant in season and out of season. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for these that have listened. I thank you for these that are sharing, Father. Lord, I thank you for the harvest from, from this, 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 this platform, Father. Lord, I thank you for encouraging your saints, Lord. Lord, I thank you for, for the new saints that have come on board, Father. Lord, I ask right now that you heal those suffering with the coronavirus like only you can, Father. You are a healer. You're yet in the healing business. Lord, I ask that you comfort those who have lost their loved ones during this time of pandemic, Father. Lord, you, you can comfort them better than we can. We don't have the words to say, but Lord, I ask that you comfort them, Father. Release your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And now, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about something. If you're saved, I hope this has encouraged you. If you're not saved, I hope this has encouraged you to get saved. So you say, well, what is what is being saved? Saved is starting a relationship with Christ. Saved, salvation is starting a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? How do we start a relationship with Jesus Christ? I'm going to read verbatim for you. I'm going to read exactly what the good book says. We're going to go to Romans. And we're right here. Romans, the 10th chapter, the 8th through the 10th verse. I've already read... For God so, well, I've already recited John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's see. we got to take it a little further. Let's see what, what Romans, the 10th chapter, 8 through 10 says. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. We've been talking about faith. Believe, believe, believe. That's faith. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, if you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart, in your heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shall be saved. For with the heart, man, mankind, it's not just, you have to be a male, it's mankind. For with the heart, man, believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So let's look at this right here. It said we have to confess with our mouth. We can't sit there and say, you know what? In my mind, I'm saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And I'm just having a long conversation in my mind. No, it said confess with your mouth. This thing right here, your mouth. Okay? We have to confess with our mouth. And then we have to believe in our heart. Okay? It's a partnership. We confess with the mouth and we believe with the heart. What does that look like? I'll share, I'll share with you. Okay, let's just use me. Dear Lord, forgive me. This is Robert. I'm a sinner. Forgive me, Lord, of all my sin. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. Lord Jesus, please be my Savior. Be my Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray this. Amen and amen. If you do that and you believe it in your heart, it doesn't have to be an elaborate prayer. It doesn't have to be a 10-minute prayer. But if you do that and you believe it, guess what? You're saved. Now that you're saved, I need you to do three things. Just three things. I need you to start off with these three things. These three. These three. Right here. Three. Okay, number one. I need you to find a Bible-believing and a Bible-teaching church. Okay, here's a couple examples in Michigan. Uh, that's where I'm at. 
I'm in Michigan, so I can't be talking about what's going on in in Georgia or California because I'm here in Michigan. So I'm going to say the first church I want to talk about is Pentecostal Temple, Church of God in Christ. It's located in Inkster, Michigan. The pastor is Kellen Brooks. That is the church that I am a member of. Okay? Then we have Everlasting Word, Church of God in Christ, which is located in St. Clair Shores. The pastor is Wade K. Smith. We have New Christ Temple, Church of God in Christ, which is located in Detroit. The pastor is Superintendent Loris Upshaw, Jr. We have Holy Trinity, Temple of Deliverance, Church of God in Christ, which is located in River Rouge. The pastor is Michael Miles. We have Dunamis Institutional Church of God in Christ, located in Ypsilanti. The pastor is Kenneth Walls III. And we have Spirit of Praise, Church of God in Christ, which is located in Ecorse, Michigan. And the pastor is Samuel White. So I said there were three things. That was one. Number two, we're talking about a relationship. I didn't talk about religion. I said a relationship. So we're talking about a relationship. A relationship needs to have communication. You need to talk. You need to listen. You need to learn about each other. That is the building block of relationships. Okay? So how are we communicating with God? We don't just pull out our cell phone and dial him. We pray. We, we approach him. Jesus told us how to pray. If you're having trouble with how to pray, it's, he tells us the Lord's Prayer. You can just look that up. You can Google that on your phone and it'll tell you the Lord's Prayer. And it says, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. In other words, hey, holy reverence to thy name. We talked about when you come to God, you have to come to him a certain way. This lays the foundation for how we are to pray. Okay? So that's how you start off praying. And then you get more and more used to praying, more and more used to communicating with God. And then you'll say, hey, Lord, I just want to tell you, thank you. You've been so good. I just want to thank you. Okay? I'm not here to ask for anything. I just want to thank you for what you've done. Sometimes we need to go before God and just thank him and, and thank him. And then we have to pray for others. So when we're communicating in this relationship, the relationship is not just us and God. The relationship is us sometimes interceding. In other words, we're praying for people who are sick, people who are struggling, people who have something that they, they've shared with us. They say, hey, I'm struggling with this thing. That doesn't mean you get on Facebook and put them on blast. Okay, if they've come to you the right way and they've tried to become accountable, they want you to be an accountability partner, you can go to the Lord in prayer for them. Okay? And that's not one of the loud prayers where you yell real loud where somebody can overhear, but you can go to God for them. You can go to God with them. You can pray for them. That's what it's about. There's many, many, many ways we communicate with God in prayer. There's many ways we can talk to Him in prayer. Okay? So, prayer is communication because there's a lot of communication. There's verbal, there's nonverbal. Okay? We can get, we could just do a whole series on that communication. Okay? But that's the second thing. So, there's a Bible believing church, prayer. The third thing that I need you to do, I talked about communication and getting to know the Bible. That's the best way for us to get to know God. That's, this is His written word. Okay? I always put one up where I can can show you what I'm look at, looking at, what I use, the Life Application Study Bible. This is very, it makes it very plain. I love that. Yes, that's what it comes down to. We have to study. We should press in even more. I want to take it to another level. I want to dig in even more. Okay, so I'm ready to, to, to let God use me even more. I want to go ahead and go further. I don't want to just keep this right where it is. I want to go further. I want to press and go beyond. That's what it's about. We should constantly want to go further and further in Christ. We should constantly want to dig deeper and deeper in Christ. That's what it's about. That's what we're, we're here to do. We're here to encourage you during the morning inspiration. This is the morning. We need to be inspired when we get up. Okay? God woke us up. That's inspiration enough. But sometimes we need a little more, and that's okay. And that's why we take his word. God has woken, woke us up. We have life. We have health. We have strength. And guess what? We take his word with that. We talk about it, and we start having a good conversation with God, and we get happy. Sometimes I get a little happy because this inspires me, okay? 
God's word inspires me. And guess what? When we have our testimonies, when we share our testimonies, that inspires others. That just shows how good God is. Some of the things that God has, God has done for me, you don't know unless I share with you. And some of the things that God has done for you, I don't know unless you share with me. God is an awesome God, especially when you've known him as a healer, when you've known him as a way maker, when you've known him as a friend that sticks closer than a brother, when you've known him in the middle of your trial, when everybody's against you, when it even look like the weather don't want to like you, God is still there and he doesn't just like you, he loves you, okay? Dearly beloved, I, I just wanted to stir up your pure mind. To any who have watched this and have accepted Christ, please share that with the person who shared this with you. Please say, you know what, I looked at the video and I want to try Christ. I'm tired of being sick and tired. I know there's more to life than this. I want to try Jesus. Please share that with them because that's what it's about. It's not about me. It's not about the person who shared it with you. It's about Jesus. It's about Christ. It's about God. That's what this is about. And as I always like to say, God loves you and I love you. You be encouraged. You be blessed. And you have a great Wednesday. They talk about this is hump day. Wednesday, the middle of the week. Guess what? This is a, this is a day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. That's partnership. Okay? God bless you. God love you. And I love you.